So draw all the isomers of C5H10. This does not follow, this is not an alkane. How do I know it's not an alkane? Yeah, if it's alkane, it would say C5H12. So there's two hydrogens missing. Uh, whenever that happens, well, well, you'll see when we draw it out. So, uh, what I like to do, uh, as I told you before, is start out with the longest straight chain. Now, as I mentioned, if it was an alkane, we'd have 12 hydrogens. But this only has 10, so I need to remove two. One way you can do that, put a double bond in there. So now if you count the hydrogens, and I'll just mark them in red, there'd be two here, one here, two here, two here, one, two, three there. That's for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So make an alkene uh, will remove two hydrogens if you need to do so. Now you can move that double bond around in different places. Right here. If I put it anywhere else, it would be the same as one of these two. So there's my two five. <coughs> Length of five. Let's try the fours. I can have, so now I'll draw butane with one extra carbon. Now I'm going to figure out where do I put that double bond. I could put it here. I could put it here. There's one other place I can put it. Put it on the other end. Are there any others you'd like to ask me about? Because uh, I think that's all for the four. Unless you see another. No. Okay. Uh, now, that would seem like, okay, that's pretty satisfactory. However, when we learned the cycloalkanes, we learned that those are also missing two hydrogens. So, for example, this is C5, because it's a ring of five, and how many hydrogens? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's C5H10 as well. So a ring is another way to remove two hydrogens. Uh, I can make the ring smaller and have one carbon uh, group coming off of it. That also has 10. So this is like my 5 for the rings. Here's my 4 for the rings. Uh, now I'll try a 3. I can have two methyls. In the same spot, I can have them in different spots, or I can have an ethyl. So this one, when I'm removing hydrogens, makes it more complicated. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten possible isomers versus uh, that C6H14. I think I have like five or six. Any questions here? Do you see any that I might have missed? So what you can do with your friends, just make up molecular compounds and see how many you can get. Oh, I think I missed. These are all, what are these isomers called? These are all the structural or constitutional isomers. Uh, almost forgot. There's more I could draw, though. I'll change colors for the other ones. Let's, uh, this one, that's drawn as trans. I could draw cis. This is the cis, this is the trans. Same thing can happen for, uh, where is that one I was looking at? This one. This can have uh, the cis version with the methyls going upwards, or the trans version with them both going the opposite direction. <coughs> so what I drew in black is added, adding in the geometric isomers. 
So what I drew first was the structural constitutional isomers, and then the geometric isomers I added later. So that added uh, really two more to the picture. Okay. There's actually one more you could do, but I haven't taught you that kind of isomer yet. Any questions? Yeah. What about the one where the methyls are attached to the same carbon on the triangle? Right here. Yeah. That one. That one. Uh, you wouldn't be able to do a cis and a trans for this one. Let me redraw it. Because there, uh, you need the two substituents to be on opposite. Uh, on different carbon atoms. So right now they're as is. If you switch them, it would be the same thing. It would look identical to itself. So this one only has one, so you don't need to add anything uh, to that. Is that cool? Okay. Anybody else? Great, great question.